Hello, welcome back. It's Mazzy here. This is It's the Music Stupid number 11. It's the Music Stupid. This is the great thing about having a, a wonderful record library collection. You know, again, countless times uh, I get asked, as I'm sure many of you who have large collections, why do you need all those records? How do you have time to listen to them? Do you listen to them all? Well, like a library, they're there for me to check out, to play, and to return back. And if I want to reread, re-listen, I check it out again later. There's a lot of twofers here. I don't mean twofers, double albums of, of reissued things. Not that, but as I was pulling, I realized I was pulling two records by these artists or, or related records. And not that I'm going to go deep into all the two of the five. I usually pull five when I do these, give or take. But uh, they're, they're pairs, couplets in a way. So they're, think of this, <laughs> it's the music stupid, as a poetic couplet. You know, couplets in poetry. Okay, I won't read poetry to you, not this time at least. I'm going to start out with um, what had, has become known as the Paisley Underground. And I realized, and I think it was the mood because I was listening to this kind of music in the last few days, of these two bands that are they're totally connected and intertwined is the Dream Syndicate, uh, led by Steve Wynn. This is the kind of music that I really like. After the whole punk scene and post-punk scene, these bands, like the Dream Syndicate and the next band, which maybe you are already guessed who it is, uh, that they, are, they overlap a little bit or they kind of collaborated a little bit production-wise, um, the incestuous L.A. scene. But L.A. band... They have that sort of vision of, of Neil Young's Crazy Horse, that, that vast psychedelia, dirge-like, ongoing, long pieces of music with a lot of, of just, you know, fuzzy guitar passages and jams. And, you know, for a while, the whole punk and post-punk thing were short, quick, to the point, danceable. This is not in that same way. It's very psychedelic. It's bringing back psychedelia. And uh, this is their first album. Uh, I saw them at the Warfield Theater, I believe when this album came out, or maybe the second album uh, in San Francisco. When You Smile is a long song that kind of, it's just, there's a repetitive feel to it. I wouldn't say it's drone-like. And of course, it ends with the last, the Days of Wine and Roses, uh, named after the fabulous uh, Lee Remick, uh, Jack Lemon film of alcoholism to alcoholics, right? Am I right on that one? So the Paisley Underground, jammy, psychedelic, epic in its own jammy way. Jammy is, is a key word here. And then uh, they went to AM Records. This is a promo I got from AM, stamp promo. I do I need to believe it, uh, prove it to you. It's not about freebies, but I got this then. And this is a really good record, too. In fact, there's one song I used to play a lot, um, John Coltrane, Stereo Blues. I got John Coltrane on the radio, and it kind of revolved. It's not some brilliant uh, masterpiece, but maybe it turned a lot of people who hadn't, you know, in 1984, this came out? 1984. Maybe it turned some people on to John Coltrane just to check out who was this cat they're singing about that may not have known. As much as we know about John Coltrane here, maybe, a lot of people, especially then, didn't know John Coltrane. The jazz, you know, sort of rediscovery of these great jazz artists wasn't really happening then in the rock circle like it is now on YouTube and the vinyl community and beyond that jazz is like a big part of it now for a lot of people. And a lot of people even my age who had never discovered uh, jazz are discovering again the last several years. But that's a different story. So this is a really good album. Again, The Medicine Show, Daddy's Girl, still ho holding on to you. Uh, same lineup, but um, I love Dream Syndicate. The other band which is connected started out of Tucson as sort of a surf band, but they moved to LA and they changed their name. Their first album is Gravity Talks and that's uh, Green on Red. And they had a little bit of a, more of a garage sound. I, I guess Dream Syndicate had a garage sound too, but they seemed to me a little more ragged with that garage sound. And it was led uh, by uh, guitarist and vocalist Dan Stewart. And this is their first album on Slash Records. Uh, 
And it's a really good record too. Same, the Paisley Underground, the elongated, um, not as elongated jams as the Dream Syndicate, but it's got that garage epic feel. They were probably a little more, since uh, coming from Tucson, in the country vein. Their later albums would be more country, but there's a crossover uh, with some psychedelic uh, country stylings. And this is a great record. But then they switched labels. And, uh, you know, they had a cult following. They had a club following. Again, I saw them. They're on Enigma for this album, I believe. And this is 1985. And this is Green on Red, Gas, Food, and Logic. I think of the two, this is my favorite. San Franciscan Chuck Prophet joins the band here. And, of course, uh, those of you who know who he, he that name, uh, this is where he kind of got known, at least to people like me, Chuck Prophet. Again, very epic, very... Uh, you know, I, I think these influence bands like Calexico, uh, in, who are more refined and more acoustic-based in a way. But again, a really good kind of neo-psychedelic Western uh, album of the Paisley Underground. Fantastic. Here's a band out of San Francisco that some people think they were a one-hit wonder. And uh, in a way, they are. They, they didn't quite fit in the psychedelic scene. They're almost more like the Love and Spoonful way, and that's Sop with Camel. Of course, the big single that was across America, I don't know about Europe, is Hello, Hello, and very, uh, you know, Tin Pan Alley side of music. And uh, they were from San Francisco, Bay Area, I think in Marin, Sausalito, and, and that area. And uh, the lead singer, uh, was it David Kramer, I believe his name was, uh, just had a really, just a really lighthearted sound. I realize now, yeah, I mentioned uh, Love and Spoonful. Of course, they're produced by Eric Jacobson, this uh, record. Eric Jacobson produced the Love and Spoonful records. Later would produce the first four, five, six Chris Isaac records. So um, he adds a lot to this. But it's got that great tinkling piano. Really kind of a, just a, a, a poppy, kind of, I don't want to say Baroque maybe, but uh, not the San Francisco thing that was going. But this was in, was it, 1966? This was actually a, a pretty big hit. The single, you know, has a hype sticker right there. Includes Hello, Hello. I love this. Now, they didn't really do much after that, but they had a reformation in 1973. And this is the uh, Sop with Camel, The Miraculous Hump Returns from the Moon. Very different sound. Has that, it, it's, this is almost like prog light in a way. And it's a really good album. It was on uh, Reprise Records, and it kind of came and went. But I'd say if you see this record, pick it up. It's got a really great feel. It's got if you like Hello Hello, you know, um, you know his voice. There he is, right there. Interesting uh, little fact: when um, one of my photographers did a photo shoot, where are they now for Rolling Stone? I guess it was in the late '80s, early '90s, and it was Sop with Camel. So there was this giant. Uh, uh, dry docked, kind of almost like a houseboat, but a, a, a mini ship in Sausalito. And they they reformed and they jammed a little bit for that, for the photo shoot. And they played a few short gigs, uh, didn't record anything. Uh, the various members were doing other things, but they sounded great. And I was, there was maybe 10 people at this photo shoot and they, they jammed and they played Hello, Hello and some songs from this. And, um, Peter Kramer, that's his name. Peter Kramer is a vocalist. Terry McNeil, the great piano guitarist. Martin Beard bass. And Norman Mayle, I remember him because we chatted. He, he, Him and his wife started a printing company in Oakland. And so that was what he was doing. And then it must have been fun getting back and doing this Where You Now, Rolling Stone. Uh, this record didn't do anything. Again, it was produced by Eric Jacobson. But I love this record. It's a really kind of a wonderful record. You know, it is quirky. The Jefferson Airplane just got uh, a star on the Hollywood Boulevard, and the three uh, remaining remaining members, the Hot Tunit duo of uh, Yorma Kakonin and and um, Jack Cassidy, were there as Grace Slick, and um, and they're all getting old. But again, my favorite of the San Francisco psychedelic bands. But I want to show two records. These two. I don't know what if they were given the A&R guys, RCA, a lot of drugs, but they started their sub 
label, their their custom label, Grunt Records for RCA. And RCA stuck with a lot of stuff that didn't sell, really. It's bizarre. Uh, th these are amazing. This is one of my very favorite records. The first Jefferson Starship record, but not really. It's called Blows Against the Empire, Paul Kantner and Jefferson Starship. This is where he used the name for the first time as an offshoot. Jefferson Airplane were still together by at this point. But uh, Marty had come and gone and everything. This has everyone from, almost everyone from the airplane. Obviously, it's with uh, Paul Kander and Grace Slick is a big part of it, as is um, David Freiburg, Freiburg, who was in Quicksilver Messenger Service, who would later go on with them uh, to start Jefferson Starship when they got more slick. I'm not a huge fan of that. I think Limited Doses, the first album. But this is an amazing album. This is a concept album that Paul Kander was really into science fiction and space. And this was the first record album that was ever nominated for a Hugo Award. That's a literary science fiction award. David Crosby's on this. Nicky Hopkins is on this. Jerry Garcia is on this. It's very thematic. The first opening track is a very funky, uh, kind of rock and roll, almost sloppy song. They almost sound like they're out of tune. But uh, it's this whole concept of leaving Earth, you know, bring all the, the kids and the people, the families together. They do one cover song on here, which is the second song called The Baby Tree. Rosalie uh, Sorrell is a folk singer, that song, which is really beautiful. But let's get together. Child is Coming, Sunrise, Starship. It, it's really a good record, really a good record. I I did get the reissue a couple years ago. I didn't find it as good sounding as this, but it, it's about the music and the record. There is, if you're a CD person, get the expanded CD with the outtakes and alternate versions. It's fantastic with the jams, the acoustic guitar. These bands, they were recording uh, the airplane, all these uh, San Francisco bands at Wally Hyder's with the Dead, which was a, a studio on Hyde Street. Uh, it still exists in a different form but really great record. This is my Maslov edition uh, from those days. But this is a record that d that totally bombed. Manhole, Grace Slick, 1973. Again, as I said, after this, I, <laughs> they, they started going commercial after this and the whole Starship was a Dragonfly, I think. Later that year was released. They realized they needed some FM hits and some top hits, which they went more commercial because they were putting all these kind of solo you know, they did uh, Blows Against the Empire. They actually did pretty well. Sunfighter, uh, the Chrome Nun album, Grayson and and, and um, Paul Kantner did a series of records. This is really interesting. Cover artwork, self-portrait by Grace Slick herself. Side one is one track, and it's called J, theme from the movie Manhole. There's no such movie. It's sung in English and Spanish. It's orchestrated. It's one whole song. 14 minutes, it's prog like neoclassical, totally uncommercial, but it's really cool. It opens up side two with Come Again Toucan. That's probably the most commercial song on here. It's very catchy and it's really a beautiful song. Uh, I think it's it's only magic, it's only music, excuse me. Uh, song and it's sung by David Freeberg. And it, this is a, a good album, it's a choir taste. I like this album more now than I did when it came out. Of course, I bought all these grunt records and all these related airplane records when it came out. Um, it does come with a, uh, a lyric, some part partial lyric book. Interesting thing, all these uh, albums around this time, remember they had made the terrible, uh, well, I like Bark, but their last album, Long John Silver, is probably their weakest album. Bark is actually better than people think. But there's always inserts in their albums and extra stuff. I tell you, <laughs> they took RCA Records for a ride back then. But I, I love that. I love that we have this stuff now. So I'm going to close out with this couplet. Again, we're into a poet couplet. Ray Davis. Obviously, Ray Davis of the Kinks. Did these Americana Act 1 and Act 2. Written when he was living in New Orleans around the time he was... Uh, shot in the leg. I remember that. Uh, these are really good records. The covers are the worst covers in the world. They look like, I don't know, <laughs> spiritual. Not there's anything wrong with spiritual, but you know, what horrible. They needed better cover art. I think that, I think that helped not sell these records a lot. I don't think they did really well. But what's a couple things what's great about him. It's very autobiographical. He tells these stories. There is some 
speaking in it within the music, but a lot of singing. But the backup band is the Jayhawks. Are the Jayhawks? Is the Jayhawks. You know that country band, you know, the whole Wilco, Uncle Tupelo, Jayhawks, country, psychedelic, you know that when I'm talking, Americana. They back perfect band to back Ray Davis on uh, these two albums. And I, and I think you can get these albums cheap. So I highly recommend them. Ray's voice sounds great. His writing is great. Uh, some of the members, uh, the I, what's her name? The, Karen Grotberg does some vocals. In fact, sings lead on, I think, one or two songs. But I love this record. It's really, really uh, a good couplet. Good. They came out separately about within the same year, I believe, as I recall. Again, it's more acoustic based uh, it's jayhawks if you like the jayhawks you know what i'm talking about but instead of gary, gary lordis's uh, lead singing you got the great ray davis from the kinks singing what's not the like right anyway i'm glad um you stuck with me for this i hope there's at least one or two records to check them out and see if you like the descriptions that's the thing to check out you know i'll bring more things from my library when i get in the mood when i think of something to show you all because i love uh, sharing music and this stuff is it makes me feel good. Um, I've been playing these records for the last day and a half, and um, I'm always reminded how good they are. And and how, in the mood you're in, there's that perfect sound. And I think in some ways, maybe except for the airplane, uh, the other records fit really well together. Like, they would be great as, um, you know, appetizers and, and entrees and salads and desserts and a whole full meal with those records. I think the two airplane related albums fit like, you know, that's maybe going for a drink beforehand or afterwards. Anyway, thanks for watching again. Mazzy loves you. Subscribe, please.